Our scripture lesson this morning is from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Here ends the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. Now I know that I am the door is the head is the title for my sermon. And that's because in the original Greek, it actually says door rather than gate. But we tend to think of a gate around a pen as opposed to a door. So and the New International Version decided to translate it as gate. But it is the same thing in what we are talking about. And it is one of the I am sayings of Jesus in the book of John. And that is what we are focusing on throughout Lent this year. We started on Ash Wednesday with I am the bread of life, and last week it was I am the light of the world. And today is I am the gate, or I am the door. Now this is kind of a hard teaching, because if we proclaim that Jesus is the only way to heaven, we as Christians are considered rather arrogant and And we insist on our way of doing things. And so we have kind of been silenced in this recently. But Jesus is very insistent about only one way to heaven. And so he even goes on to say in John, in Matthew, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. So Jesus is very insistent that this is the way to God the Father. So what are we as Christians supposed to do in a world that wants to say all religions are just a different way to God? What should our role be as we look at this type of place in society? Well, first, we have to understand that we can't pick and choose what Jesus says. We can't just decide that we don't like that saying, we like what the world is saying, and so we're going to choose it. So we have to understand, we have to start from our foundation, from the words of Jesus. So, what should our response be as we live in the world? First, we are not the Holy Spirit. We like to go around convicting other people of what they have done wrong. It's just kind of the way we start. And so many of the people who turn out to be arrogant are the people that go around saying, you are going to hell if you don't convert. But Jesus also said, when he, and he is referring to the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will prove 
the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. So it's not our job to be the Holy Spirit, to be convicting the world of their sin. That is the Holy Spirit's job. So what is our job? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is this scripture is full of verses about seeking God and finding Him. So we can start at that place for each of the religions. They are coming to that religion because they are seeking God. And so even though they're not coming through the gate immediately, God promises many times, but I've just picked out Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. These people will find Jesus. They will find the gate. We don't always know how that's going to happen, but God is looking and searching the world for those who are seeking for him. There was actually a town in a Muslim, in a Muslim um, country where a little 12-year-old girl was crippled. And she had been to doctor after doctor and had found no relief. She had to be carried from her bed to the kitchen table, to a chair, and back to bed. So she decided that she would focus all of her attention, since she couldn't do anything else, on finding the God of the Quran. Because that's where she lived, in a Muslim village. And so she started reading the Quran and praying and reading and praying. And she suddenly noticed something very unique in this book. It was very male-oriented. Everyone mentioned was the son of someone, the son of someone, the son of someone, but Jesus was the son of Mary. He's mentioned in the Quran, and he is mentioned as the son of Mary. So she started asking God, why is he, the son mentioned only as the son of Mary, when all the rest, their father is mentioned? And she began to pray, fervently pray. And Jesus appeared to her in a dream and told her to search for a New Testament. And that's where her search started as she learned about Jesus as the way. But there was one other thing Jesus did. He woke up and she could walk. Jesus healed her during that night. She could walk and you know when she found that New Testament which the whole village helped her find because she couldn't wait to tell him tell the rest of everyone about what Jesus had done in that dream, the whole village became a Christian village. You see, she had sought God, and God had answered her through a different religion. So we must be really careful how we present Jesus when we present him, that he is the one he is the one who will decide how to convict the world. Everyone just needs to search for God. For all we know, they would meet Jesus at the gates of heaven and be given their chance there. We don't know how this all works. We are not God. So we have to place our faith in the Holy Spirit doing his or her job. She's actually a her in the Old Testament, by the way. Her job in each heart. We are simply told to be witnesses. We are simply told to tell what God has done for us. Not try to convict others. 
So how do you, what do you say? Do you remain silent when somebody says, well, all religions point to heaven? It's just different ways of getting there. God gave me an answer one day when somebody said that. And I have used it ever since. And this is what I tell them. I hope you're right. I hope that every single person who pursues God can get to heaven through their method. But the trouble is, If you're wrong, and I'm right, I get to go. But if you're right and I'm wrong, we all get to go. So I just as soon be on the ship that I know is getting there. God does his own convicting And I don't know if that influenced that person. But I simply shared what I knew. And I did not condemn the others. Because I truly hope that that anyone who is searching for God, as I believe this Bible tells us, they will find him. And that Jesus is the door. And with the door, with the gate, He promises a full life. And he doesn't just say in heaven. He says here. I want to close with one more story. I heard, I was only about six or seven. And when you're six or seven, you don't always listen to adults very well. Especially me. Of course, I have that problem today too. So, In any case. The story was, I happened to overhear a woman. Someone said to her, what happens if you die and you find out you're wrong? That there is no Jesus, that there is no God. And she said, I've been walking with Jesus for 60 years. And she said, even if I die and find out tomorrow he didn't exist, I loved every moment of those 60 years of walking with him. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. It made life here on this earth tolerable. So I leave you with that. Jesus said he came to give life. And he came to give it abundantly. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you and thank you for what you give us. I pray that each person within my voice knows that they must seek you and that you will reveal yourself, that you will even reveal your son so that they can see us there in your glory one day. We thank you that you gave us this word so we know the words that Jesus said and that they are our foundation for what we believe. I pray this in the precious name of Jesus and in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen.